I'm Hope here at Crafty Hope and welcome. It is time for week two of the Seek, Gather, Create challenge. This challenge mostly takes place on Instagram, but I like to go ahead and record my process so y'all can see what I've done when I share it on Instagram. So the challenge itself comes from Lisa Goddard, Tina Hoyce, Le Laura Dennison, and uh, Melanie of Mixed Media Magpie. I will have all of their links on Instagram below. They issue out their prompts each Sunday, encourage you to create with all four prompts you can do any kind of media so I I'm trying to do some assemblages we'll see I will link up here to what I did last week I was really challenged last week um, and then post what you've made and use the hashtag seek gather create and when you do some of those things along with tag these ladies um, you can be entered to win some prizes I encourage you to go check out their posts sorry my desktop is rare. Um I encourage you to go check them out so that you can learn more about the prizes and the giveaway if you're interested in such things. So for this week, the challenges are, I mean the challenges, the prompts are fabric, pebbles, a puzzle, an acid or fluorescent green. I am still, oh now I know how I think I'm going to use it. Okay, so for fabric I have pulled out, this is a bit of a, I think it's a flower sack towel, at least what they call it at the Dollar Tree that I've coffee dyed. So it's got this nice like um, brownish color to it. Pebbles. I immediately thought of and what I call pebbles are these glass pebbles. Um, I get these at the dollar store. Let's see if I can go ahead and open this one. Um, I know I can't there. Okay, so these are just little glass pebbles. Um, flat on one side, rounded on the top like a cabochon. And that's kind of how I like to use them. I like to put them over things so that it's almost like magnified. And I think that's super awesome. So I'm going to use these in some way. For a puzzle, initially I thought like a jigsaw puzzle and was thinking I would use some jigsaw pieces somehow. Um, but I didn't even go looking for them because then I was like, oh, I could do a crossword puzzle, which is integrates a little bit more into things so if I needed I, I did go looking for to see if I had some jigsaw puzzle pieces and I thought I did I can't find them darned if I know where they are so I'm gonna try to use that and then acid or fluorescent green that is not a color I use very often I do have this Amsterdam reflex green I have some colored pencils I just got that have fluorescent colors in it so there is a green one and then my watercolor palette that I use most often has this section here of neon colors so there's a neon green there so and I know that's but I think neon and fluorescent are kind of the same thing but I remembered I also bought a pack of embroidery floss that had neon colors so I have a neon green or fluorescent green um, embroidery floss which I think is how I'm going to use it. I'm thinking I'm going, and I haven't decided all of my steps yet, but I'm gonna tell y'all what I'm thinking real quick and then I'm gonna actually do it. So I think I'm gonna try to do an image transfer from my crossword page onto my fabric um, using some matte gel medium. So I, I did a tester and it does work for the most part. I don't care if it doesn't, you know, if it's a little splotchy, it's not about that. Um, so I'm hoping this is big enough. Oh, it's just barely. Okay, so I'm going to try to do that. And once that is transferred, I am going to pick out some words. Or while it's drying, I think I'm going to go figure out some words because this does say pebbles. It is plural, and I'm a very literal person, <laughs> so I have to use more than one. So I'm thinking two or three of them um, with maybe some words somehow on hand like this or something and then um, I will do some kind of embroidery on the altered fabric and then set it in something um, or mount it in some way um, that I haven't figured out <laughs> we'll get there um, but for now I this this is how this is what I'm planning on using and how I think I'm going to incorporate things so yeah, this is my plan. 
and I started with that image transfer. So using some matte gel, I actually got my new one. My The old one was a little glumpier than I needed. So I've got my new matte gel. It's still the Liquitex matte gel. I'm covering the entire surface of that crossword puzzle from a uh, newspaper. And yeah, just making sure I have a nice thin coat on there. And then I am going to place it onto the surface of my fabric. I'm going to smooth everything out, try to get it to make sure it is, there's no bubbles and it's just as smooth as possible. I don't do a lot of transfers from newspapers. So I wasn't, you know, I did that little tester. Anyway, I let that dry. I let it air dry for a bit and I'm coming back in with just my spray bottle of water and making sure the entirety of that paste paper is coated and then I am going to peel it up. Now, y'all, look, that that crossword puzzle completely transferred off of that newsprint and onto that fabric. So I'm gonna show you, look, that this piece of paper, it only has the front side. It does not have the back side with the crossword. It is super neat. But the problem with that is I'm gonna dry this real quick and show you as I dry this, that entire thing is going to cloud up and show me exactly how much paper is still left there on the back of that print. So that's what I need to get off. So, and oh, and there's little bits of paper still on there. So I'm gonna spray it. And I, this went on for a while. I spray it and I do my best to peel it without peeling up the entire transfer. So it, it wanted to, if I had tried hard enough, I could have just taken off all of that transfer because newsprint is fairly thin. So I've sped this up a bit and I'm not gonna show you the amount of times I sprayed this and peeled and sprayed and peeled. There are loose pieces where there's still like thicker um, paper there that I'm just kind of taking off. I'm like, I'm not going to need this whole thing. I just need part of this. So you can see I dried it again and it clouds up again. So I'll spray more water <laughs> and peel off more of that paper. And I just go back and forth with this for a long time. I ended up, uh, it wasn't drying. I had soaked it so much that I set it outside at the end to let it dry in the hot, hot Alabama heat, and it was still a bit cloudy, but that's okay. I could see the image of the crossword puzzle in the end. So I am altering just a piece of copy paper with some of that reflex green acrylic ink from Amsterdam, and so I have, you see, I just dripped it on there, wet it with that same water, and then I'm spreading it out. I will dry it here in just a second. It takes a good while to dry it because I, I it's good and saturated. And once it is dry, I do it again. I do another quick painting over the top. I felt like it had soaked in quite a bit and I wanted this as fluorescent acid green as possible. So once it is good and dry, I take it to my typewriter and I had looked up a bunch of three word phrases and decided on, well, I found the phrase dare to suck and I didn't care for that but it did strike a chord. And what I did like is the idea of dare to fail. So I will use glossy accents to glue my pebbles onto the words I've chosen, I've typed up and chosen. But y'all dare to fail <sighs> speaks volumes to me because my word for the year is brave about doing things and trying new things and doing the things that scare you and just daring to do. And that's it. I might fail. It might be awful. It, I could suck at it, but I won't know until I try them. So this idea of daring to fail, you know, even if you fail, you've learned something and that, oh, it speaks volumes to me. It, it really does. I, I, yeah, this year's all about trying some new things. I tried my vlog series. I've tried, um, I got into a gallery in the downtown area where I live. I've, there's something else. I can't remember what, but I have been daring and it's, it's worked out okay. All right, so I've decided I'm going to mount this inside a tuna can. <laughs> we had had tuna that day, and I remembered I had a couple of cleaned out cans set off to the side. So I grabbed one of those cleaned out ones, 
and um, I am trying to poke a hole in it. Now I have a tool that I could punch through this, but I wanted to show you that all you really need is a nail and a hammer. And I do this on top of a board so I don't damage my, my desk or any other work surface. And I'm gonna do it one more time to get it all the way through to get that hole as wide as possible. So I just want a hole in there to make sure I can hang it this later before I do anything else. And once that hole is punched, I've got some pretty thick gesso here that I am going to coat around the outside of it. Now, I don't know why I didn't think to paint the inside, but we'll get to that. So I'm painting the outside. I wasn't sure how this was gonna come together, but I knew I didn't want just a plain old tin can. Plus it had like the expiration dates stamped on the side and some gunky glue marks and stuff like that. I had sanded this down a little bit first. I will tell you that. Um, so yeah, that the outside of the can was sanded down to give it a little tooth for the gesso to stick to. And now my glossy accents are dried. This did sit for just a little bit, but I am trimming off the excess of the paper that I had dyed green. And y'all look how these, I'm gonna tell you, this is fluorescent. It glows <laughs> just about on its own. So I'll trim this off and once it's trimmed, I will also grab my sanding block. I think it's the same sanding block I used to sand my tuna can. And I will sand off the excess of the paper on the edges just so that it's not I don't know not bulky and there's nothing extra there this is nothing fancy I just turn it over and pull that off Try, I'm trying to make sure I don't pull too much off I think that one had a little glue that was still a little wet that's that came out the side and that was fine I got it. Now, if you want this to look even better, you could always paint the back of it or do something like that, but I wasn't super concerned. Now, I did take a piece of, <laughs> it's a piece of thick paper. It was with some packaging that was in the trash and pulled that out and kind of got the shape of my, the inside of my tuna can, cut that down, made sure it fit in my tuna can. And now I'm going to trace it on my fabric there. So I'm going around my fabric. I just picked a spot and you can see that transfer is not great, but you can totally tell that that is a crossword puzzle. I used a Cibolo all pencil because it marks on all things. So I knew it would mark on this fabric transfer. And y'all with that transfer on there and all of that gel medium and everything, this fabric was like, I don't know, like thick and firm almost. It was really neat. So it was like stiffened up a bit. So it was really easy to cut. I put my pebbles, my word pebbles down so that I could space them out and drew a couple lines with just a regular pencil around. And I'm going to use that fluorescent green embroidery floss there. I'm going to put it on a needle and come back in and I'm going to uh, slow stitch, just do a running stitch around those like sketchy lines that I drew. So basically it's three sketchy circles that I drew and they're not real dark and I'm just kind of approximating it. And I am not going to make y'all watch me <laughs> slow stitch all of this. I want to do, I'm going to show you just a little bit, but it's a running stitch. So basically you just go in and out of the fabric and you can see a little bit there how the, um, and fabric's thicker than fabric would be. I did get almost immediately like some bunching from that thread. It is an inexpensive thread. So that's part of that. And I don't know, I think when I threaded it, my needle, I didn't do a great job of getting all the threads through, but I persevered and <laughs> got this going. Um, once I got past that little I don't know, there was like a point on the thread where that knot or whatever it was, once I get past it, this went a lot smoother. So I'm going to keep stitching here. I will, yeah, we're going to jump ahead here in just a second. This was, this was a fun process. I've, after my iCADs, I've really enjoyed just stitching. So I'm going to show you, I'm just tying this off on the back. Nothing fancy at all. And then I decide, it, well, the fabric had kind of uh, bunched a, a little from the pulling of the thread. So I needed to go ahead and mount it. So I'm going to grab, I think, yep, that template I have. And you can see that's something for some Halloween packaging I found in my stash. Um, I've been cleaning things out in my craft room. It desperately needs it. So, um, yeah. And I'm using Fabri-Tac and I'm putting it straight onto that piece of thick paper there. 
and I will glue my image transferred fabric on to the front of that and then I will yeah I've got to get it like centered and I had to work quickly the Fabri-Tac gives you a little bit of working time but not a whole lot but gluing it down yeah you see my thumbs up it, it flattened it out it wasn't it didn't have like the bunching that it had before once it was glued down I think I'm going to trim a little bit of excess off the edge maybe Ooh, my tin can still with the gesso still wasn't dry like <laughs> So I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to do. And I'm going to go ahead and glue down my pebbles. Uh, I think I used some E6000 to do that. First, I'm, I'm trying to make sure I didn't want it in some other pattern than what I originally envisioned. Um, yeah, lots of moving around. And I was like, no, just do it the way you thought. So I'll grab that E6000 here in just a second. First, I wanted to do as much as I wanted to do onto that substrate before I glued the pebbles on because I knew once they were on there, it would be heavy and awkward and harder to handle. So I'm eking the edges with Walnut, strain, Walnut Stain Distress Ink on an ink, uh, what are they called? Ink blender. That's what it is. I'm trimming off a little bit of excess of the, um, that paper that's kind of showing and the ink's not taking to it. And then I will grab my E6000 and glue these down. And once I get these glued down, y'all, that's all four of my prompts there. That is fabric, pebbles, a puzzle, and fluorescent green all on the same one little thing. But, and I could have just called it done, could have punched a hole in that and hung it and that would be done. But I'm all about, I love little shadow boxes and kind of framing things and making them feel a little more finished. So the rest of this is really just me finishing this up a little bit more, getting, getting it, yeah. Oh, I do find that, yeah, some of the edges and stuff needed to be re-glued and I didn't want there to be any kind of like slippage or weirdness once I put it in my tuna can in a little bit. So I will put this aside to kind of keep it out of the way. I actually put it on top of my little gesso container that's sitting there. Um, oh yeah, and I'll ink it a tad more. Yeah, I, I was like, stop futzing with it. <laughs> so I'm, um, I got a little ahead of myself and decided to work on that tuna can but first I wanted I was fairly sure I wanted to wrap it with some of that fabric so um and y'all this was this was a definite dare there were so many points in this that were definite dare to fail like this might not work um go for it and see what happens <laughs> and this fabric is one of them so I trim it and tear it about just over the height of that tuna can and I wasn't sure that this would wrap fully around the tuna can but I was like you know what if it doesn't I'll get some more fabric and I'll do something else just just try so I tear it in the the fabric bunch a little bit this again is super cheap fabric and so you can see I'm kind of testing it out here and I'm like well it'll be close <laughs> maybe I can make it work and so this is some of my dare to fail. And I decided I wanted to go, even though I was fairly sure I was going to cover it with that fabric, I wanted to kind of alter the outside of it. I didn't want it to feel so bright white. So what I'm going to do is grab some uh, transparent, oh y'all, I never can remember the name of this. It's one of the umbers. It's an acrylic ink from Liquitex. I will have it in the description box below, but I just wanted to get a little bit of brown on there, but not, it didn't need to be like full brown. So I'm just putting a little bit of this on there, watering it down and going around it. I do end up, because that gesso is not completely dry, because I don't have patience, it's, uh, some of it peels up a little bit, but it's okay. I'm using acrylic ink. It kind of goes over the metal a little bit anyway. Um, maybe a, a, uh, alcohol ink might have even worked just as nicely, though I'm not sure it would spread with water as well as this did, but right there, can you see some of that gesso peeling up? Yeah. But I was like, it's okay. I, it's, and it was a little sticky, but whatever, whatever. I'm covering it with this fabric. The stickiness would help the fabric to go on there. And y'all look, when I do it, it meets almost perfectly. I didn't measure, I mean, the, I pulled the ruler out to get the height or the depth of that tin can, but I didn't go around it. So this was absolute pure dumb luck here. 
then I've got my U6000 again, and I'm going to put, yeah, first I've got to get it flowing again. And so I'm going to put just a little bit at the, like, the bottom of the can there, you see. And that's the only place I'm going to put, I'm going to put basically a line of that around the can. And slowly pull the fabric. And, yeah, you can see what I'm doing. Putting some glue down pulling the fabric around on it. There is the seam of the fabric there and that's kind of what I'm using as my guideline because that seam I assume is straight. And so that's where I'm putting it, um, you know, because that back of that tin can is straight. So once I get that all the way around like this, there's a little bit of the fabric sticking up and I'm kind of looking at it, trying to decide. And y'all, I am I'm just going to fold that back. That's all I'm doing. I'm folding it back. And because all of this is taut, it stays. It has, yeah, it's not going anywhere. I will put a little right there where it's kind of bumping up. I do put just a dab of glue and stick that down. Done. That, that outside, that's all I'm really doing with that until we add our um, hanger. Am I going to do the hanger next? No, I think I do that at the end. Okay, this is just some cheap foam core that I am cutting down just to fit inside the back of this tin so that the my little platform of prompts <laughs> sits up a bit. So I put the E6000 right on there and I'm going to push that foam core right into the back so it touches the tin and then I hold it while I'm looking around on my desk for something heavy enough <laughs> to hold in place because <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. Um, and I finally find this, um, I've got this little jar of tidbits and um, yeah. So I put that in there and once that is dry and I can handle the tin some more, I grab my black gesso and I'm going to carefully, carefully, carefully paint the inside of the tin. Now I totally should have done this before I put the fabric on, but I was like, oh no, it'll be fine. Just be careful. So I got like a, a fairly narrow brush and I'm doing this pretty slowly. Y'all, this is this is sped up. I was doing as slow as I can and I think I'm going to skip ahead. And I only paint it down as far as where that foam core is because I knew I didn't need to paint further down into it. I mean, I went a little past it, but that was kind of my line. Like if my, if my little altered platform is um, sitting on that, it doesn't need to be painted much further down in there. Well, I thought I skipped ahead. Maybe I didn't. Um, <laughs> my editing, y'all. So I'm going to paint that. And I did, uh, y'all, I'm going to tell you, I tried to dry that with my heat tool. Something started smoking. I don't know what it was, but I was like, yeah, I think we're just going to let the rest of this air dry. Now, as a reminder, gesso is used as like a prep. It is not, it shouldn't be your final surface for anything. I forget that all the time. I'm just like, done. Okay, it's gessoed. It is a primer. It is your base coat of something. It's not the top coat. It's not a sealer of any kind. So I have got some brown acrylic paint that I'm going over the gesso, which I thought was great because I had inked the edges of my little altered platform thing with that walnut stain and it's brown. So I thought, okay, just some brown paint will lead up to that and help seal this whole thing in. So Again, I am painting all of that inside. I used the gesso was there, again, as a prep, as a base coat, so that when I put this brown on, it had something basically to stick to. Okay, so I'm going to let that dry. And I'm testing the hole real quick of my... Um, yeah, the hole that we punched earlier. And I'm looking at the thread I've got and I've decided, oh, that's not the thread that I need for this because it's got that bunching on it. So I'm going to take it off and come back with another piece of thread. Now here, again, daring to fail. I was like, yeah, if I pull this needle through, then that's all I need. And I'll tie a knot here, just like this. Use another needle to kind of press it up to the length I want. No problem. And then I'm like, Wait, how do I get my needle off? Y'all, <laughs> total fail. 
absolute like lesson learned. Oh my gosh. That's why I kept this in here was to be like, you know, we all make mistakes. <laughs> that was, uh, tickled me so much. So I am going to rethread my needle here for you. And, oh, did I not cut this out either? I don't know. Okay. So that is rethreaded and I will go up through my hole, back down through my hole so that I have my loop at the top of this. I could not believe that. I was like, that's easy. I'll just put it there, put the needle in the center and pull it through. Not a problem. <laughs> so now I have that loop at the top. I'm again making a knot. I will take another needle or a, some kind of point thing to help guide that knot to the point where I want it just like that pull it tight and then I realized that I could yeah I had to make another knot up there so I'll do the same thing on the outside so that this thread doesn't like pull through and then I will trim it all right y'all this is we're right here at the end so the last thing I need to do is take a bit of glue and I think I'm going to put it yeah on that foam core because that's where it's going to stay. Because if I put it on the back of the that other thing, I, it, we'd have too much glue. More glue than we need in spaces. We don't need it. And then just push that in. And I'm going to let it dry. I think I do have to do a little bit of touch up with the paint. Because um, as I was putting it, it scraped a little bit of the paint off. Not a big deal. Touch that up real quick. And then this is done. I am absolutely thrilled with it. It is not something I would have ever come up with without the fabric pebbles puzzle and fluorescent green prompts from the hostesses of seek gather create i encourage you to go to instagram check out the hostesses check out the hashtag and see what other people have made with these four prompts and play along get inspired and do something fun and different i uh, definitely dared to fail with this one but i think um in the end it was a success i'd love to know what you think Thanks so much for coming by and watching, and I will see y'all later. Bye.